Hello all, welcome to the Windows API exploitation recipes for red and blue teams at Pentester Academy. So this will be the final part, the third part of the WTS enumerate processes EX uh, API usage to find running processes and interesting things about them. Now in the last two videos, we've seen how to use this API and dump different information about the process, right? So we found that to dump the PID, the handles, threads, and the process name, uh, we really did not require any form of additional privileges, right? We didn't have to run as admin. Now, when we saw that we wanted the SID and the account name and some of those details, we found out that if we ran as admin, then we could go ahead and find out information about most processes. Unfortunately, even as admin, we could not find this information for some remaining processes. In this video, we will look at how to solve this problem. Okay, so when a user actually logs in, uh, the LSA goes ahead and creates a token for the user, right? This token is given to every single process created for that user. Now, what does this process token actually contain? Right, this contains the user's SID or security identifier, right? Think of this as a unique value across the domain, which can uh, uniquely identify that user, right? Then it also contains group SIDs. So these are SIDs uh, for groups the user is a member of. And it also contains privileges allowed. So we'll talk about privileges in just a bit and a lot of other things which aren't relevant at least for this video. Now, as I mentioned, SIDs are basically used for trusty identification and typically are unique across the whole domain. Now, SID has a format, you have the little S and a hyphen and a bunch of numbers. Uh, for this video, it isn't relevant. However, if you want to learn more about the format and, uh, you know, well-known SIDs and all of that stuff, you can click on this link and have a look at it. For our purpose, it is just a unique identifier for the user and it is used for security purposes. Now, based on the SID and what the user is allowed to do, uh, the process token would contain the privileges. Now, these privileges are nothing but the right to perform different actions on the system. So, as an example, a shutdown action or an action where this process is allowed to debug other processes, right? So, how do we look at the privileges which are available to a process. So for this, let's go back to our machine and let's actually start Process Explorer 64-bit again. Doesn't it feel good to do every single demo on Windows 10 64-bit? Okay, so we see a lot of running processes, right? Now, let's actually go ahead and run our, so this is an old one, I'm just going to delete this real quick. Okay, let's run our program, right? I'm just going to run it as a regular user. So as we had expected to see, we could not find a lot of this information, right? Now this program is still running because I have a, uh, you know, get car at the very end. So what we could do is we could go into Process Explorer. We could locate this program. Here it is. And we can double click it to look at its properties. There we go. Now, the security tab is of interest to us. Now notice, first of all, it says the user, right? Desktop, blah, 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 slash Vivek. Then we find the unique SID value, right? After that, we have uh, some information here about the groups and what is allowed, etc. The thing which of 
is of interest to us is down below privileges and the flags right so now if you notice the different privileges we actually have and which ones are enabled and which ones are disabled now what this really means is that this process could do many of these actions on the system provided of course that it is actually explicitly enabled here right so now as we can see it says the shutdown privilege has been disabled for this process by default however we could enable it if we wanted right but if you notice we do not have the se debug privilege which allows us to debug other processes right that doesn't exist here interesting now let's actually go back here and exit this now i'm going to run the same program again but right now as an administrator so i'm going to go back here and i'm now going to run the same program as an admin okay so there we are now we get more information let's go in here there it is let's double click it now what you would end up noticing is we have a lot of privileges which are available right most of them seem to be disabled in our token but the fact is all of these are available at our disposal now that this process has been invoked as an administrator interesting right so what do we have to do well we have to enable the privileges we need to do the actions we need at run time within the process right so for our purpose to find out as much as we can about another process having se debug privileges would be fantastic simply because if you have a privilege which basically says hey you can debug other processes view their memory write to it and do a ton of other interesting things then of course you're going to at the very least be able to find its sid and the user who invoked it and all of that right now what you would notice is the se debug privilege as we can see here even though it is available in the token it is disabled by default so we will now have to write code in order to enable this at run time right fantastic so let's go back to the slides for a bit so what have we really learned right now even though privileges may be available not all privileges may be enabled by default and we would have to explicitly enable disable what we need and in this case we are interested in the se debug privilege so what are we going to do first we are going to go ahead and look up the value for the se debug privilege right the value which we can feed to other apis then we are going to have to have a handle to the actual token of the process which is ourselves right if i am the running process uh, uh, a handle to my own token and then i am going to adjust the privileges in this token now for this we have three simple apis look up privilege value for looking up the privilege value se debug priv open process token to open the token and of course no no prizes for guesses adjust token privileges to adjust the privilege in the token which is to enable se debug privileges right in this case so let's actually go ahead and do this so this is the code where we left off in the last video now what i have done additionally is i have added a file called debugpriv.h right and this just has one function which says enable debug ability okay now we first call lookup privilege value to look up the se debug privilege value 
Then after that, we create a token privileges structure. We go ahead and feed in, uh, you know, the SE debug privilege value. We make sure that we actually want this privilege to be enabled. Now, after we've created this structure, we get a handle to the process token, right? In our case, we want the handle to our own token. So we go ahead, call get current process, and this actually ends up returning the handle to our own process. So that is actually passed to actually get the process token. Now we use the process token along with the privilege structure to call adjust token privileges to go ahead and enable SE debug privilege. Fantastic. So let's actually go in here and call this function at the very beginning over here. There you go. Let's actually go ahead and rebuild the code. Great. Let's go to the binary. And now let's actually run the same program as an admin. Now, what you wonderfully discover this time around is we went ahead and found out information pretty much about all processes, right? Uh, as I said, zero is idle process and system is basically just the system process. So there you go. Every single process in here, we actually now have the SID, uh, we have the user, we have the domain, we have all the information which we need. Fantastic. So seems like we've managed to compete with Process Explorer. Now, just to verify, we could actually go in here and open up the process properties. And you would actually find now that SE debug privilege has been explicitly enabled. Now, notice how clear this whole thing is conceptually. Once you understand what privileges are, and how to enable disable them, right? Fantastic. So now the common question of when you run a utility and you actually don't see the results, even though you're running as admin, what could be a possible issue, right? A common issue when you do a lot of this coding, as you will see in the next couple of videos, is you've probably forgotten to enable the right privilege in your token. Cool. Uh, let's actually go back in here. So that's basically it guys. I mean, you know, uh, a very simple addition to making sure you're enabling the right privilege in your token ensures you can get uh, as much information as we possibly can about different processes running on the system. I'm just loving making these videos. I hope you guys are enjoying as well. So that's all I had in mind for this video. Uh, if you like this video, tweet to us. We are Security Tube. Let me know what you think. Uh, I would love to meet each one of you and actually ask you, but uh, would just be curious to know what you think, even if it's over social media. Uh, that's all for this video. See you in the next one. Enjoy your time at Pentester Academy. Thank you.